the border of the Netherlands, close to Antwerp, on the south bank of the Skelt estuary, we find the drowned land of Saftinger. From the air, it looks like a massive work of abstract art. In reality, it is a unique nature reserve, the largest brackish intertidal marsh of Europe. The reserve has European Natura 2000 status. The inhabiting birds are characteristic of intertidal areas. The seemingly infinite salt marshes create a huge brackish wilderness with unique flora and fauna. Thanks to the open landscape, tidal forces go uninhibited. Twice in every 25 hours, the tide works its way into the creeks and gullies of the western Svelte. The tidal forces collect and deposit mud and sand, creating a natural, balanced irrigation system. Never too much, and never too little. Perfect for the plants and animals that live there. The organisation Hetzius Landschap has managed the area since 1975. Every year, 12,000 visitors participate in guided tours. The creeks can fill up and flood within two hours, and in the maze of creeks and gullies, it is easy to get lost. School classes and tourists from both Belgium and the Netherlands come to Saftinger for this unique experience. In autumn, large groups of geese find their way to the drowned land of Saftinger. These geese come to eat the succulent grass that grows here. Tubercles from the sea club rush are another favourite. Because the area is kept open, it allows many other bird species to feed here. During the breeding season, the red shanks become very noisy. Close to 10% of the Dutch population breeds in Saftinger. In earlier days, the area was kept open through sheep grazing. The artificially raised areas are a remnant of this. They provided a refuge for shepherds and the flock during high tides. In some places, sheep folds were also built on them. One sheepfold still remains intact today. They have a somewhat mysterious air about them. People who go there today can still smell the remnants of Saftinger's history. Only hunters and shepherds ever dared to venture this far into the salt marsh. In the heart of Saftinger, an old bridge takes us back to a time when brown sailing ships still sailed through the western Skelt. The western Skelt is fundamental to life in Saftinger, as well as the local economy. There is a great contrast between the open wilderness of Saftinger and the countless cargo vessels that pass by on their way to Antwerp. The possibility of an accident poses a constant threat to the whole ecosystem. There are birds everywhere. In the dead winter reeds, you can hear the bearded reedling ping to each other. They skillfully climb up the reed plumes to eat the seeds. Avocet forage in the shallows. Driven by hunger, a water rail dares to venture from the safety of the reed bed. A snipe skillfully fishes for worms in the dark mud with its long beak. Green shank move gracefully while searching for food. 
A common sandpiper searches the waterline for food. Every bird has its own characteristic behaviour. Food is plentiful in Saftinger. Celery, for instance, has seeds that resemble small nuts. This plant grows mostly on the edges of rush fields. Celery is a typical plant found in brackish areas. In the early days, it was abundant in the west of the Netherlands. When the seeds wash up on higher areas such as the dikes, the twite and snow bunting are there to feed on it. These winter visitors breed far up north. Sadly, they have also become more rare. To make management of the area easier, sheep have been replaced by less labour-intensive cattle. Widgeon also contribute greatly to the grazing. They are the most numerous bird to pass through on migration, and many will spend the winter here. These ducks trim the grass extremely short, before leaving for their Siberian breeding grounds in March and April. High on the sandy grace levees, specialised vegetation develops. The border of salt and fresh water is marked by the presence of lesser centauri. Salt marsh rush and sea wormwood also thrive at this particular freshwater saltwater gradient, although sea wormwood grows slightly higher up on the levees. Their spectacular light grey colour makes them stand out against the bright green of surrounding vegetation. Seaspurry and greater seaspurry also grow in great abundance. When the tide comes in, the plant closes its flowers, trapping air inside in order to keep its reproductive organs, the stamens and pistil, dry. Samphire is a chemical wonder. It is the only plant in the world that stores salt in its tissue. The shell duck in Saftinger forage on a very special plant. It is actually neither a plant nor seaweed, but something in between, diatoms. Diatoms form a slippery brown mass on the surface of the mudflats. Shell duck gather these from the bottom. Carla, one of our guides, has much more to tell about life in the mud. Dat, uh, dat zijn de gaatjes van, uh, van de Vorkspriet uh, garnaal, of de slijkgarnaal, zo wordt die ook wel genoemd. En dat zijn uh, piepkleine uh, garnaaltjes van een paar uh, millimeter uh, groot. En die garnaaltjes die, uh, ja, die, uh, die graven als het ware een u-vormig uh, gangetje in het uh, slik. In de winter zijn die, uh, die gangetjes wat dieper dan in de zomer. Want dan willen die garnaaltjes zichzelf uh, natuurlijk beschermen tegen de kou en tegen de vorst. En uh, nou, als het uh, laag water is, net als nu, dan hoor je vanuit die uh, gaatjes, dan ontsnapt er uh, lucht uh, uit die holletjes, dan hoor je zo'n borrelend geluid. Als we heel stil zijn, dan hoor je dat uh, geluid ook uh, naar boven komen. En dan is dat de lucht die uit die holletjes uh, ontsnapt. Uh, nou, dus er zitten zo'n 10.000 uh, van die uh, vorkspritgarnaaltjes per vierkante meter uh, hier in het slik. En die, die vorkspritgarnaaltjes die zijn uh, nou ja, een uh, hele belangrijke voedselbron voor de vele vogels die hier uh, leven.
The management of Saftinger is based on scientific research. The terrain managers make long and tiring journeys into Saftinger to find out more about the plants and animals that live there. Detailed vegetation maps are made. If changes in the area are identified, then the management plan can be adapted. It is the same for the underwater world of Saftinger. All imaginable fishing techniques are employed to survey under the water as accurately as possible. It is not an easy task. Wellies frequently get stuck in the wet and muddy clay. Nevertheless, there is great excitement about every catch. Ik doe me zo meteen naar. Die leeft op de bodem en die pakt alles wat hij te pakken krijgt. Die kan mee. Moet er wel blijven leven, hè? Oh, ja. Often this work is done voluntarily and in the evening. Much time is devoted to identifying the different species. At the far end of Saftinger, the waves are much rougher. Some parts of the salt marsh are heavily eroded, while others are built up. Recently, an old peat dike was exposed through erosion. Peat was the original material used for building dikes. Mark Bowser has done a lot of research into the history of the area and can tell us much about it. There are no light but light torens. En uh, ja, er zijn een paar. Uh, Eén is heel oud, denkt men, want uh, dat is een, een ronde. Die hebben we daarnet gezien. Met, uh, die is opgebouwd uit uh, kloostermoppen. Waarschijnlijk wel natuurlijk recuperatiemateriaal van uh, een tijd daarvoor. En uh, ja, waar we nu ongeveer staan, dat is uh, een recenter, want die ligt ook ruim 60, 70 centimeter hoger. En dat was weer een heel ander soort uh, bouwsel. Dat was weer vierkant met een mooi plavuizenvloertje. En dan is er zelfs nog een derde geweest, maar ja, die is helemaal verdwenen. En dat was uh, met bakstenen helemaal opgebouwd, maar ook met een bakstenen vloertje. In medieval times, Saftinger was a prosperous polder. A flood in 1570 brought an abrupt end to this. Everything was washed away except for the village of Saftinger. During the Dutch War for Independence, the polder was flooded to keep the Spanish out. Much research is being done on Saftinger's bird life outside of the breeding season. This provides us with a good insight into the migration of birds. It also shows the distinct role that Saftinger plays for many bird species. Our researchers are very passionate about what they do. Many of them are volunteers. Een beetje vleugellengte en daar kan je het onderscheid krijgen tussen kleine karakiet en gosseriefzangers. Alleen die, die zijn nu al voorbij, die zijn nu niet meer vangen. En we kijken of het een, een oud beest is of een, of een beest van dit jaar. Nou, die heeft een pracht van een verenkleed en dat betekent dat hij dit jaar uh, geboren is. En dan wordt hij gewogen en dan mag hij weg. Hartstikke mooi zeg. Many different birds inhabit Saftinger's reef beds. In the grazed open areas, species such as yellow wagtail breed. Yellow wagtail is just one of many species now struggling as a result of agricultural modernization. Even within Saftinger, we can see the clear population decline of certain species, such as the meadow pipit. In 
In autumn we get visitors from further north. Rock pipits are greyer than meadow pipits, and around 6,000 of them spend the winter here. The breeding season is characterised by the presence of many different species. Gulls and terns are busy raising their young. Around August, the mass migration of birds to the warm south begins. The route is full of dangers. Raptors and poor weather are just some of the challenges birds face. There are plenty of fish in the creeks for little egret and spoonbill to feed on. Spoonbills often forage together, rounding up their prey. Little egret also prefer fishing together, waving their bright yellow feet underwater to stir up the fish. The arrival of dunlins signifies the start of autumn. Sea aster starts blooming. The smell and atmosphere is humming with excitement. It is the buzzing sound of insect activity. Small tortoiseshell, comma, and many other butterflies. These salt marsh mining bees are a specialised salt marsh species. They nest on higher sandy levees. It takes them a whole year to complete their reproductive cycle. The males come crawling out of their brooding cells first and immediately start fighting over the females. Before long, the female bees also start coming out and together they fly into the salt marsh to collect pollen from the sea aster. They fill up new nest cells with the pollen, but they need to watch out. The Epiolus tarsalis, a parasitic bee, is eyeing up their nest. She lays her eggs discreetly in the nest while the host bees are out. Horseflies are biting insects that hang around the grazers in Southdinger. Their larvae grow up in wet places and mud pools, close to where the cattle are. This way they are always close to their hosts. Sadly, it is not a very friendly relationship. The female horseflies suck blood to aid egg production. Human visitors to the area can also be bothered by them. Horseflies have extraordinarily coloured eyes. Everything that lives in the salt marsh is specialised in one way or another. Case moths have tiny cases containing their larva. In autumn, these can be found on salt marsh rush. High tide is no problem for them. Their cases contain an air bubble, which enables the larvae to breathe. In between the salt marsh plants, Minuscule black dots crawl on the seaweed. They are spire snails, miniature snails that are often smaller than two millimetres. They are an important source of food for the rock pipit. A brackish water louse is not much bigger than the spire snail and is a bit of a mystery. This spotted crake has to pay attention when fox paw prints are visible in the mud but he is not the only one that needs to pay attention. The fox population is the reason that few grey lag geese successfully raise their young here. What a peaceful atmosphere. The grey seal and harbour seal lead an undisturbed life here.
Then it's time for most of the geese to leave. Together with their young, they go to more northerly regions, leaving behind a unique and extraordinary nature reserve. South Dinger's managing organisation, Hatsiris Lanskop, works hard to protect and develop this natural heritage.